Coming up on the Grassroots Podcast. I do believe there's a market in the supplement industry. Um, I'm not against using protein powders and that as well, like what you guys sort of covered. I do. I use them. It's it's a part of my day, not my day. So if- I think we've hit it on the head where it's not sustainable um, in any shape or form really and it gives you a bad relationship with food mm. it'll impact on your social life as well uh, sustainability is not there as someone who oh. is both a fan of potatoes and bread <laughs> this hurts my feelings <laughs> we can't be friends anymore <laughs> we like bread <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Grassroots Podcast. Another big episode today, guys. We're coming back after a long time without a drink, looking at <laughs> nutrition and training myths. Had quite a few questions over the time since that's passed, so very much looking forward to delving into it with you. And I've got some great co-hosts with me today. First and foremost, we'll go to the newbie first. I'll leave the Store what? Stalling there for a little bit. That's all right, man. <laughs> Alyssa Longmuir, mm-hmm. welcome to the table. Hi. It's it's weird. I'm on the wrong side of it. I'm usually like there doing weekend previews, not here. So Different approach, but... It's a bit different. There's a large mic in front of me. That's new. What's happening in your world? Um, Not a ton. Yeah. Just, you know, um, AIHL stuff for the season, doing behind the scenes things. So... That's all I do right now. <laughs> That's okay. Not enough hours in the day. I think we can all sympathise with that one. And the Blomster, Sean Blomfield. Good to be back, my friend. Good to be back. Survived the last one. It was a hectic episode. That was pretty heavy, eh? Hey? Yeah. It was really good. I got so much out of it. And it's, yeah, it was a very cool episode, man. I hope was- we can do like a part two and a part three. Oh, and- I think you can get like 10 out of it or something. So it's, yeah, it was good. I watched it. I watched, uh, watched it back. Got a fair bit out of it. It was very interesting, man. Yeah. yeah it was cool. I guess well. the main thing as well, there's so many practical points as well that we could yeah. take away from it. Yeah, so. it, was, it was awesome. I had so much fun with it. So it was a really cool episode last week. And we've got Mythbusters this week. We do, mate. Um, have you seen the first Mythbusters? Yeah. We'll delve right back to the start. There was one. Dude, you put me on the spot. I haven't, I haven't watched that. One yet that far back. No, I've gone. gone homework. So when I first started here, I watched previous episodes. It's probably just that one I missed. Hopefully. That's all right. There's some good uh, good nuggets in that one. Beautiful. We've uh, we've got a lot of experience on the table here, whether it be either professional or just real time life experience coming out with this. So I think we can break I think a this, few myths. This is going to get very curly, I reckon. <laughs> it could. I'm could I'm, some, I'm keen for controversy today. Man. I, I think there could be some controversy. Yeah, I'm sweet. Let's I, get some conspiracies going. Absolutely. I've got. Probably a list of the top five nutrition and training specific myths that I've come across very recently and nice. commonly. I'll throw those out there, but we might even come across some other ones as well. So I'm sure we can get something going. First and foremost, let's do a nutrition one to start with, guys. Oh, we're going now. Yeah. yeah let's, let's get deep. Let's, let's kick into All it. All right, let's roll. So the mindful eating movement. It's uh, something that's cropping up a lot with weight loss, yep. being mindful about what you eat. It's the approach, the non-diet approach to losing weight. I've honestly had people ring me up and request, you know, can you do this style with me, the, the non-diet approach where we we just really want to sit, enjoy our food. It might incorporate taking longer with your meals, maybe looking at a portion size, putting your knife and fork down between each meal and really savouring that, that taste and flavour of the food so that essentially – you get that satiety feeling you know, mm-hmm. after food hits your stomach in 20 minutes. And, and that's supposed to be the golden ticket to weight loss rather than wolfing your food down. What are your thoughts, guys? I'll open well, it right up. Uh, what are you allowed to eat? Like what's the what's the whole – like can you just eat anything as long as you savour it or what's the – Basically, no <laughs> Qual- quality diet. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like I'm not talking about being being mindful about eating. Oh, I'm mindful when I smash McDonald's. Yeah. I'm going to be feeling it half an hour later. That's simple. Hey, I think that this is probably one of the biggest things. Well, I see where it kind of falls down. That it's not specific enough. Yeah, it doesn't seem to like include like what type of food you're going to be eating obviously like if you are eating like mcdonald's every day of a week it doesn't matter how slow you're eating that it's gonna have the same effect you're still putting the same stuff in your body but like if you're looking at the way in being like mindful about like conscious of what you're eating 
and stuff like that, then maybe, but I don't think that's really what it's about. It's just about like this mm-hmm. slow eating. Yeah, slow eating. And I think also like the mindfulness can extend to making well, better choices, but there's even confusion about what is a good choice now. Yeah, well, you're not educating anybody. A sugar's good this week or not? It just changes every week. Well, a fat's good this week or not? <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know. It's, that's the thing. Is a carbs bad? I like carbs, so no. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to carbs. That's another one. But uh, um, I don't know, man. This is the first I've heard of this one already. I'm already got skeptical hippo eyes on this one. That's I'm already. It. It's up there with the SMS. Oh, it's beyond that. <laughs> Like, I'm going to get real salty real quick, I think. I'm going to be super angry. Um, I don't know. I just, it just something doesn't click about it. Mindful eating. Yeah, cool. Save your food. But there's no education behind it. I, I love that. And I think you've honestly, you've hit it on the head there as well. Um, well like think I, about what you eat. I do. When I mean clean, I wish I was eating a pizza. Is that mindful eating? Well, it could be mindful eating. But I think the other thing as well, if you're eating clean, you can mindfully eat your way over your budget still. Mm. But you, know, you could still go too far. I yeah. mean, that, that's what I'm thinking. If, if you give me that, that lovely salad that supposedly is great for me, I can eat. Well, I tell you what, I'm the person they clear out of the buffet and I'll be mindful about it, don't get me wrong, and I'll put away far too much. And I think the notion of taking um, being able to quantify something to say that this amount, you need a certain amount but no more. Okay, this is your actual requirement for what you need. Your People body need size. guidelines, man, every time. Yep. We need guidelines. So I think we just yeah. quash that one. On oh, easy. Head. Even yeah. as soon as you said that name, busted. Done. Yep. Get it out. Mindful eating. Yeah. Go on, thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm happy. We've got a consensus on that one. Mm. We've made it through one point without arguing. So That's okay. We're doing excellent. I think it's going to ramp up. Oh. So, protein. More is better. <laughs> No. You should go. (laughs) Sean, take it away. Okay. An adequate amount is better, all right? A quality amount is better. Uh, Like, for example, um, you could go one way with a vegan or a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. It's harder to get protein in because of the amino acid chain that someone will take in due to not getting in um, your meats, like your simple ones, your meats, your eggs, all that sort of stuff. So. Sometimes it's not more is better. It's getting the right quality protein is better. And they've, like recently when we were down in Sydney and that, uh, one of the nutritionists I saw, he was saying that it's not exactly how much protein you get in now. It's a quality of protein and the quality of the amino acid count that counts more because it's actually a more productive type of protein, if mm-hmm. you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't say more is better. I think the bro science version of more is not good, you know. <laughs> How many grams should you Oh, eat? yeah, you know, eight yeah. grams per pound of body all weight. Of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Arnie, Arnie mean. How much protein should I have? All of it, yep. you know. Yeah, you, you, yeah you, there's a base you need, and but a lot of it is marketing nowadays, especially like you probably see with the nutrition companies, protein powder. Oh, absolutely. Big serving sizes, man, 35 grams. Like, it's, it's a good quality selling point. Like, if say if that was a protein powder I was selling you, I want you to finish it quick because it means you're going to buy more. Yeah. Great. Have 40 grams a day, you know, every day, twice a day, all that sort of stuff because you'll burn through it and you'll come back and give me more money. Yeah. Yeah, so it's – it. I, I do believe, like, there is a certain threshold, like, you have to work with. It's more – it's not as high as what everybody thinks. I'd completely well. agree. Yeah. Alyssa? I think it depends, obviously, what you're trying to do, obviously. Like, if I'm just – like, yeah, like, what I need in protein – as someone who, you know, goes to the gym a couple of times a week, yeah. maybe goes for a run, mm. it's going to be vastly different to what, like, someone who's working at, like, an elite level of sport is yeah. going to need in protein kind of thing. So, yeah, more protein is obviously going to be better for that person because if yeah. they're running off my level of protein, mm. that's not they're not going to be getting enough just yeah. because I'm not using it at the same rate that they are. Like, it's all in moderation, yeah. I guess, to – what your physical activity level is and what your goals from that physical activity are. Bang on. Oh, I think that's spot on. And, it, and again, it's such an individual thing. Looking at the recommended dietary requirements, 0.8 of a gram per kilo of body weight. Most people would look at that and go, okay, for a, a general individual not undergoing heavy activity, that's quite conservative. Yeah. Really. Um, and then the biggest question is how much is is the ceiling? How much can someone absorb during a day? I usually start at the point eight if someone's starting out. A lot of the times I don't actually count macros with people with it, with it and myself as well. I think it's too much. I think you yeah. can follow basic guidelines and then go from there. Um, 
I'm always quality push control. Like never want to cut out carbs completely, never want to get rid of fat completely, never want to get rid of um, protein completely. Like I don't believe in all that sort of stuff. It's You can sort of play with it. Everybody's body type's different and all that. Or I, if if I have to work with numbers, if someone's a very analytical person, I start with the 0.8 and mm-hmm. then we just gauge over like a couple of week period. Um energy levels, consistency in their workouts, how they're sleeping, how they're feeling, their digestive system, all that sort of stuff. If it's too much, real common analogy with someone having too much protein is gas. Yeah, like, you know, true. And, yeah, digestive system's all mucked up. They're just not feeling too good. They're feeling heavy and lethargic. Just play with it with, from there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think it's important to know where your information is coming from. So where you alluded to with the, the supplement products, if you're seeing on the back of the label, you should have this serving size, recommended use, you should have two to three serves per day, you really should question where that comes from. Mm. You know, there is no one size fits all cookie cutter approach to no. it. Um, the population guidelines is like 97.5 of the population's needs, that will cover. Um, but, I mean, once you start exceeding two grams per kilo body weight, you, if you're looking at that if it fits your macros approach, yeah. it's going beyond 40% of your entire intake coming from protein. Mm. That's heavy. That's a lot on your like on your kidneys and your liver and all that sort of stuff. And, like, there's a lot of fluid you got to take in to help digest that. Yeah. On, tap, on top of that, though, yeah, it you just – I sort of find and go with what works for you, but just start start small, start smart. Yep. Um, a lot of times now, instead of getting in the eight nine meals a day, it's just get in what you can get in, but make sure you try and if you are looking at macros, try and get in a an overall by the end of the day. So the whole yeah, you you probably do going back to your activity levels. Yeah, you do need a substantial amount of protein, but it's always not as much as what you think. You Absolutely. Yeah. And we become more efficient at it as well. So something like resistance training, you start off obviously your requirements will shoot up. Yeah. But we actually become far more efficient at utilizing proteins within our bodies and it drops right back. So um, your family's got a history of endurance um, events. Yep. Their requirements are actually right up there at, at the two grams per kilo of body weight once you get to the elite level compared yeah. to, say, a, a bodybuilder or yeah. a CrossFit athlete where that could really drop back to 1.3 to 1.5. It's a huge difference and not what you would expect from something that, you know, is that Oh, there's Steady a massive stage, rabbit right? hole you can go down with that one. Like uh, you can, yeah. you can, you can do comparison versus lean body weight to body weight. You can do um, different body types, ecto, meso, endomorph, compare us like how you digest protein and what you take with carbohydrates. It's more, um, don't overthink it. Sort of uh, an analogy I heard from a gentleman um, that we went to a nutrition course. It's like um, you're looking at a house that's on fire. And you decide to mow the lawn instead of focusing on the house. You're sort of looking at the wrong thing. So just overall, good quality protein, like as long as it's clean, good, high quality sort of stuff. If you're someone who does have a sort of specific dietary need, like a, um, a vegan, vegetarian, anything like that, just make sure you, you're getting that amino acid count as well. So you're mixing and matching so it's quality and it's more, you get it down right, it's just so much better for your whole you, as your body as a whole because at the end of the day you are a machine you've got to put in the right fuel you've got to go from there so yeah just stay consistent with it if you are exercising and getting more activity help yeah you do have to take in more just be smart yep. you know you'll be surprised on just play around with it you know Alyssa have you found in your family um, with that background as well yeah have you noticed a uh, a reliance on supplements or a, a want to have to go down that road for supplementation to fill a void that might have been, I suppose, perceived? But. Not really, just because with my brother, he was like quite good from quite a young age, which means once he hit like mid teens kind of thing, we were having to worry about things like the anti doping policies and stuff. So, with obviously supplements, they're always kind of a bit of a gray area and yeah. better safe than sorry in a lot of cases. Um, if anything, it was like, um, oh, I can't remember, uh, like milk powders kind of things. Yep. yep. That would be used when he was qu- not like super young, but like around 12 years old kind of thing where he just wasn't growing because his the amount of energy he was outputting in a day was more than we could physically get into him so it was just to like up 
the count of things that his body could actually ram through so he had some hope of growing kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, since then, like, we don't have anything in our house. Mm. It's just, like, endurance drinks for, like, after races. That's about it. Yeah. And even then, whenever I need them, I can never find them. <laughs> <laughs> Takes them all. <laughs> I know. I'm, like, went for a run, you know, feeling a little dehydrated. Should have some post-race drink stuff around here. No, nah, it's all empty. <laughs> and I think the biggest thing to take away, more is is not better. Mm. Um, protein is a part of the picture. Yeah. If you're looking to put on muscle mass, it is a part, but yeah. only a part. Um, I think the doping thing is a very valid thing, especially for athletes. Yeah. Um, jump on WADA websites, jump on the ASADA websites mm. as well. You're looking at, and I just went through this and reviewed it for an athlete that's going to f- um, fight over in Canada mm-hmm. uh, for a world's title in martial arts. Yep. Shout out to Kieran if you're listening. Um Four years ban, and this is not only for taking that substance and coming back with a positive test, but if you purchase it, if you order it online or you source it out, people as your competitors, if you win, Mm. will delve into that history. If you have any allegiances or ties, maybe a sponsorship to a company, whatever it might be, they can delve back and you can actually get done for intent to purchase purchase that product and use it. And it's four years away from training. It's no competition, no facilities, no access to coaches. Four years in the lifespan of an athlete, Yeah, you're essentially done. I think I've been particularly like, I suppose, non-forgiving when like any doping scandal has come out about any sport where like this professional athlete that's an adult supposedly didn't know they were taking stuff. I'm like, I've seen what you have to go through. Like you read the form, you tick it yourself. You say, I am not consuming any of these substances. The website's super easy to use. You can put in most things and it'll come back and tell you whether or not it's clean or not kind of thing. How grown adults manage to accidentally consume things completely evades me. If a 16-year-old boy can do it, like don't tell me a 20, 30-year-old adult can't. Like, mm, Yeah, it's education too. <laughs> uh, and, and where that comes from, um, my obligation as a sports dietitian is to give that to my clients, a supplement company or a shop that sells retail supplements. A, doesn't have that knowledge. Yeah. B, has a different priority to sell product. Yeah. It'd be very, very wary of what you do. I think you've got to, if you are in the position that you are registered under like an anti-doping thing where you have to be doing it because of the level you're competing at, you have to be checking it. Like you're your own first priority. Don't trust anyone's word. Triple check everything Mm. because like worst case scenario- like, well, best case scenario, everything comes up clean and it's fine. Worst case scenario, like you spot something that you could have taken that could have like ruined your sporting career before you actually consume it. So yeah, Absolutely. And pull it out before hopefully you, you, you run into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. How about, Sean, and this is, you spend a lot more time in the fitness industry. Yeah. Strictly um, compared to what I do these days. Mm-hmm. Protein shakes, weight loss, fat loss. It was huge before. It Mm. still is promoted. You get these fat loss protein powders. In your experience, um, how do you approach that subject? Because no doubt it's still something that is thrown in your face in a marketing perspective Mm. in the fitness industry. The expo was full of it. Oh, man, it was Uh, everywhere. um, Um, Yeah. Yeah. How do you approach that? Uh, Very slowly. Yeah, uh, I do believe there's a market in the supplement industry. Um, I'm not against using protein powders and that as well, like what you guys sort of covered. I do. I use them. It's it's a part of my day, not my day. So, for example, if I've finished a workout, I can just go, great, I've got a shake, I've got a client in 15 minutes, I'll grab a shower, do this, do that, I'm good. Yeah. Boom, next one. That's a part of my day, so it's sweet. Or if I'm sort of like, all right, well, I've got breakfast, okay, I've got this, this, and this, I'll throw some protein powder on it, done, ready to go, sweet. Um, as far as approaching for other people is I try and get the the habits down first before looking at supplementation. Yep. Supplementation can have a place in anybody's nutritional plan. Um, for example, like your, your fish oil has been at the forefront at the moment. There's a lot of research on that. If it's conclusive, if it's not conclusive, if it has benefits, if it doesn't, long-term research and all that, a lot of people are claiming it does for joint protection, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, but as far as like working with the everyday populace, I try and get the 
going back to what we said before about the protein, get the food stuff down because that's something you can take with you for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. If we can get you eating right, that's why those fat diets and those shake diets and all that, then they're not teaching you anything. They're not giving you a skill set. They're not – it's like the, one of the oldest sayings, if you give a man a fish, you'll eat for a day. If you give a man a fishing rod, you will eat for a lifetime. So I want to give that person a fishing rod, then we'll get a couple of fishes. Knowledge know? is power, mate. Yeah, so you just want to build with that. A lot of it's – you find a lot of it's marketing, like it's 90% marketing, 10% research with a lot of products out there. There's a few that are very high quality that you use as well. Um, you basically look at the people who market that too. It's it's a lot of advertising as well. Like you do see with supplements. I think I saw one the other day marketed by a company and they call it The Gear. Come on, man. Like really, it's marketing for people who want a stero- steroid alternative. <laughs> yep. Give me that BS. Yeah. You know, and it, there's no real research behind it. You even see behind the all the most of the containers, these are not regulated by nutrition or whatever standards or outlines. They're mostly just, yeah, you can sort of just go with the flow of it. Yep. It's, it's, a, well, it's a risky industry, put it that way. Um, there isn't regulation on the labelling, um, the requirements of what has to be in mm. the product, whether it's it's deemed safe or effective. Be smart, use. but a lot of the times the basic stuff gets you out of the way as well. Um, like, Especially with with people who are starting out, you're a clean, you're a fresh canvas, you're a clean slate. Like, to be honest with you, anything will work. Absolutely. Just be. I'm not saying that in supplements. Just grab anything you're taking in, but anything as far as lifestyle changes will progress you forward. Like, you're going from nothing to something, and you've been doing nothing for a substantial period of time. Like, this is the biggest thing I drill in with people. Create. A friggin' habit. Yes. And how many days does that take? <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a long, like you get uh, salty again. So you get a lot of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's touch on a few sore points. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's, it's even myself and that bit as well. Just, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. You've like, yeah. especially with like lifestyle changes, you've had an extended period of time of doing something that disagrees with your body. It is a type of addiction if you want to look at it from a real loose standpoint. Not throwing that term around as like something you just throw out there. No, but the same sort of <laughs> you, yeah, presentation. You've, you've gotten used to a habit that has been detrimental to your lifestyle and caused you to probably not live as long as you'd like to be. My classification, that is some sort of addiction. It is not coming forward to you in a positive manner. So, for example, if someone like I've – we've all been there, like from like nutrition to exercise to being inactive, like you've done it for an extended period of time, you have to get the basic things right. You've got to hit the reset switch. You've got to learn how to eat clean again. You've got to learn how to exercise every day. You've got to learn how to look after your body. Like then look at supplements. But until like – I hate people that go, oh, I'm more of these supplements. Cool, man. What do you have for breakfast? Oh, I don't do breakfast. <laughs> Good start. No, no you've I, got to do breakfast. Yeah, or I eat once a day or I do this or, you know, <laughs> yeah, or like, you know, oh, like you get it. You probably, you guys probably see it in that as well. Like, you, yeah. you, you know, oh, I really want to get fit and lose 20 kilo. I'm not into that clean eating, nutrition sort of stuff. I like what I eat. Well, that's why you're in this situation because you're too damn comfortable. How, ba- well, how bad do you want it? Yeah. Oh, it, it you're going to sit on the fence. Um, you need to make some changes to get there. Uh, the quick fix of supplements is a lie. It doesn't mm. get you there. As you said, the word supplement is to supplement your diet. Oh, I'm like, it. I've got like some PTs I work with and some of my closest mates are in the supplement industry. I back it. I believe in it. It's done in the right way. And the, to be honest with you, the guys I work with are fantastic. They're honest. They're smart. They're really great products. Like I use supplements. I use pre-workouts. I use protein powders. But I do my homework on them. And the guys have always been quality sort of stuff, you know. And I do think there is a market for it. The I've been lucky that um, I've been lucky. Like I said, with the guys I've worked with, do have really good resources. Like um, like the local guys around town like the supplement stores they've got a really good name about their self like they're smart you just got to be you, when the time's right you'll know what you'll need to take you and need to have the trusted source I think taking yeah. away from that it is a balance mm. um, but again you're not going to put the chimney on the house if you don't have the foundation there to start yeah. with so absolutely wow carbs Carbs like should be avoided. Carbs are horrible. Carbs are all the problems. Ketogenic diets, Atkins, great for fat loss. They're, they're great for sports performance. As someone who oh. is both a fan of potatoes and bread, <laughs> this hurts my feelings. <laughs> we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> I like bread. <laughs> 
Oh, the what carbons. about you, man? You're the you're the nutrition one. So yeah, let's let's um let's delve into this because I cop this, and I actually today. From a guy I went through uni with, I actually had a message saying that he has someone that wants to do a ketogenic diet. Uh-huh. He knows full well that there isn't evidence to support this, and this is for someone who wants rapid fat loss and yep. sustainable fat loss, but they are so hell-bent on this diet, he wants to support them and try and do it the best way that he can. He said, have you got any tips for me this way? First and foremost, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it is the first tip. Um, Good tip. Look, there's no benefits to doing this. The studies are right now low carbohydrate diet compared to a standard calorie controlled diet. Six months you get faster results on the low carbohydrate diet, ketogenic diet. Once you get to 12 months, the results are the same. Yeah. So what you've essentially done for six months, you've had a period of severe restriction in there that is not sustainable. You've also subjected your body to six months. Mm worth of the ketogenic diet, ketones are acidic, your kidneys are something that has to flush that out of your system. So the acid load on your kidneys is potentially damaging your kidneys as well. And there's no potatoes, there's there's no bread. In terms of a social situation, if you take carbs out of a meal, unless you're going to the mixed grill joint, there ain't going to be much. It makes it really hard. (laughs) It does. And even going ketogenic, this is less than 30 grams of carbohydrates a day. So a medium apple is 15 grams. A piece of bread, if it's a decent slice, is going to be about 15 grams. Yeah. If you're counting all the things in your, your non-starchy vegetables, so your green vegetables, it, they've still got a little bit of carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. If you're counting all that, it's, it's not much. Yeah. So, look, it's, it's one of those things I think it's going to give you a bad relationship with food. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, uh, demonising a nutrient per se. Particularly, like, it seems like you wouldn't be able to, like, go out in, like, a social setting and actually be able to, like, eat a meal kind of thing. And, like, that rules out half of, like, the things you can do with friends kind of thing. (laughs) It does. Congrats, you can't go to a restaurant anymore. (laughs) And so there you get that that social (laughs) exclusion as well. Mm. So there's another factor. Well, and also you probably know with like brain function. Yeah, yeah. Your, your brain runs exclusively on carbohydrates. Bam. So. so that's it. So that's why you get like um, the bodybuilders get angry because, you know, all the short tempers and all that. Yeah, brain um, fade. Yeah, I, I, did a, I did a comp a long time ago and it was still the old school reduce your <laughs> carbohydrates. So it was like a 16-week diet and yep. you just, yeah. And by the end of it, I think the last – eight weeks like I dropped 30 <laughs> kilos in 16 weeks yep so it was like the old school two hours of cardio like you know get up go do cardio before breakfast so 45 minutes of cardio then 150 walking lunges and all that faster and have, cardio there's yeah, another faster one for cardio. The put that in the bank guys faster cardio I'm right yep so down. it's faster cardio <laughs> and then so the the right of the gist of it before we could start having carbohydrate like like the thickness of like this no carbs was I can I remember this diet off the top of my head it's not hard to remember it was a ton of flaxseed oil pretty much flaxseed oil every meal so it was uh. Um, what was it, 150 mils of egg whites scrambled? Yep. Green beans, flaxseed oil. Then your next one was 200 grams of bassa, greens. Yep. Flaxseed oil, <laughs> egg whites, beans, flaxseed oil, fish, greens, flaxseed oil. I love the variety. And how long did you do this Yum. for? I did this every single day for eight. Weeks, dude. Like, I and I was training three times a day, so it'd be like an hour, at forty-five minutes cardio in the morning, then a weight session mid morning, and then, um, and then twenty minutes of intervals at night. And I, and it was like you, you, to like you know, you deplete, 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 yep. and then a week out. I remember, like, uh, I think it was like three days. <laughs> oh, I think it was three days out. I had, I did a workout, and I was allowed. A protein shake with carbohydrates, so like a sugary carbs, a Gatorade and all that. Yep. And then 45 minutes later, I was allowed like normal baked potato with chicken and just any sort of veggie I wanted. I actually pulled over the side of the road and like you could have done a drug bust because I was in tears and <laughs> just like, you know, I was totally like, oh, my Lord. Like people thought I was like, you know, it was, yeah, it was just such a, 
But I was in a horrible mood. Like, I was the worst person. I would have knocked myself out if I had a hung around <laughs> me. I was, like, getting angry for everything. If I like, like, you get so caught up on your nutrient well, your nutrient time or your food timing. Like, if you don't eat bang on that three hours, like, I'd have food ready to go sitting in the car. I'd get annoyed if there's a green light. Man, I'm trying to eat, damn it, green light. I'd get annoyed if there's a red light because I'm trying to get somewhere. Like, I was just crying at random moments. It's horrible. Rage. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. the worst. And, like, it – but – to be honest with you, the damage afterwards was like the worst. Like I put on most of the weight after the comp mm-hmm. and then some because it was just like a total like the floodgates open. Like I think my first meal after the comp for breakfast was like I got chocolate chip cookies, put it in a bowl and just added milk. I'm like, there's breakfast. Boom, done. Yep. Yep. And then like the night of the comp, you sort of go, all right, I'm going to eat. Like I had two slices of pizza and then I just had stomach cramps and I felt horrible. Like I was buckled over in the shower and that as well. And a lot of coaches are getting away from that now. Like you see a lot of that that's going in. Um, it's more carbohydrate timing and and basically good sources of carbohydrates and going there because they sort of seen like the um, and reverse dieting is a big thing now mm-hmm. in people who compete as well coming out of a competition and just instead of just going all right, it's an off and an on. It's like right, let's reintroduce some calories if you are working at a deficit for a period of time. Yep. Um and if anybody's like interested, that, that gentleman by the name of Lane Norton has a lot of really good studies on that sort of stuff about yeah. carbohydrate timing and carb cycling and all that. I, I find there's places for it. It's more energy input and output as well. Yeah. Um, but as far as like depleting like carbohydrates, you, you need them in your body. Like I've the best I ever felt was eating carbs. Like you, it's there for a reason. Like. Yeah. We, we, you, you know. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent as well. Like you can't run without them. Like. The whole keto sort of situation, like it's just, I think it's too much stress on your body. Like you, there's no, where you getting energy source from? It's like going, well, all right, apparently my car runs cleaner with no oil because oil is bad for the environment. Your car's not going to run for long. Yeah, put the old uh, vegetable oil in there. Yeah, done. It's a better alternative. <laughs> Look, there's, well, even for performance um, and in- endurance as well, I'm, I'm sure you would have heard that um, now they're going for a high-fat diet and, and stripping carbs back where it used to be a traditional carbohydrate loading um, for the endurance diets. Uh, they're really, there isn't the evidence right now um, to support that. So, I mean, a high-fat approach or extremely high-fat in terms of the keto for weight loss uh I think we've hit it on the head where it's not sustainable um, in any shape or form, really, and it gives you a bad relationship with food. Mm. It'll impact on your social life as well. Uh, Sustainability is not there, but even from the performance side, um, look at Professor Louise Burke. She's got a study coming out called Supernova, which basically hits low-carbohydrate diets on the head, um, saying that if you do go that way, and go with a high fat diet, you're going to negatively impact your performance. And for like 30 years, mm-hmm. we'll be okay. And then we're going to have this conversation again because someone thinks it's a fantastic idea. A celebrity probably writes a book on it and they went well on it. And hey, it's good. All right. It's saying that then the whole celebrity writes a book. Is it I quit sugar or whatever? The so, oh, Something similar. Yeah. yeah, yeah Look at the it. source of where the information is coming from. Yeah. You know, bro science. Mm. The, the, the world is is on bro science. You do, like, and this is where, like, it's also the the access to information. They go, oh, great, I, I need carbs. Well, 100 grams of pixie sticks versus 100 grams of brown rice or sweet potato, there's a difference. Yeah, exactly. It's the quality of the carbohydrate. So saying that, they've gone, all right, cool, man, I can have carbs. No, it's having the right type of carbs at, like, there's even been studies now, like, people just say no carbohydrates at night. Oh, then, yeah, you'll, you'll store them as fat. Yeah, store them as fat. No yeah. energy. Past six o'clock, I'm going to get fat. You yeah. know, my ankle's going to swell <laughs> if I have a carb, you know. Watch out, cankles. It's quality. We could write a book on this, I swear. Like, dead set, the amount of- Well, you, oh. you, you, you hear on the flip side, Um, there was a gentleman who I was listening to on a podcast. He was heavy in mixed martial arts and that. He said he had all these carbohydrates at night because it made him sleep better because, you know, how you have that, you know, that post meal, like, oh- and then you're out. Yeah, he Carb said that's coma. what I got. He said I yeah. would go no carbs in the morning and then from lunchtime onwards around my workouts and my biggest sessions, I'd get all my carbohydrates. He said I sleep like a log because I said I'm full of carbs, so I'd just be out cold. And this guy looked like like this guy was just, yeah, bodied up, just fit, strong, switching like MMA, two, three workouts a day, and he just said that's just how my body goes. So you're going to get horses for courses, but there's still, especially people who do train, you need that 
carbohydrate for an energy for for a reason like it's it's there for a specific point like our body wasn't designed to go oh you know what we made a mistake carbs are wrong don't have them yeah like i just know how much like my brother eats in a day like i don't know specifically what's in now but like because he's like out of high school kind of thing and actually working so i know he's diet plan's a little different though, but I know how much he was eating during high school mm. and like that was an intense number of cups specifically that was an intense number of wheat bix yeah. in the morning <laughs> oh there we go to yeah, yeah like the num- the yep. amount he would eat like well first breakfast before swim training because you know you need, you're going to go do a two hour swim set mm. you need fuel yeah, then exactly. afterwards because straight after swim training he has to go to be, go to school for two hours yep. and he's like two three hours before he's going to get recess kind of thing yep. by the time little old me who's living the uni student life which is to say not waking up before 9am by the time I wake up he's consumed like my entire day's worth of food and mm. I'm like I'm awake hi yep. what's the day yep. how's everyone going might have some toast <laughs> but yeah it's just like the insane amount like i remember what his lunch boxes lunch boxes plural um would look like and that was just like there was a lot of carbs happening there just trying to cram some form of energy in him so he could make mm. it through a training session school and then training after school and yeah. then come home and be able to actually do homework like yeah you need them, I think. <laughs> oh, you do. And uh, even let's look at wheat bix, which is a prime example of that. So two hour swim set. Yeah. If he's burning the max rate of carbs per hour, yeah. he could literally have sixteen wheat bix. That's a lot of wheat bix. I'm not sure. Beforehand. Mm. And actually burn that yeah. off. That's because he is working at that rate to burn that. So that's that's quantity. That's yeah. good. That's your wheat bix challenge right there if you're going to use it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if I do that and go see some clients, I'll be uh, turning sideways out the door pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, again, for your needs. Yeah. For your needs. Yeah. And, you, and you'll know, like, and, and that's it. Like, for me, I found the, the best thing for for reintroducing myself to, like, I was so stringent with food. Like, I am that dude who would go out and be like, I can't have that, can't have that, can't have that, bring a lunchbox or whatever. Like, what are you bringing a lunchbox for? Yeah. That was me. Um, now I've sort of found it's just, it's smart. Like, I don't measure a single piece of my food when I, like, and I do food prep because, like, I'm, I'm busy in a day. Like, I'll teach, like, on a Monday I'll have a 5 a.m. client a 6 a.m. cycle class, three more clients, yep. hour break, two more clients, a couple of hours off where I'll train, one more client, wrestle for three hours, home, five, get home at 9.30. So for me, I'll have all my food ready to go and it's it's oats with berries and almond butter, then there's like sweet potato, there's like brown rice, there's protein powder. There is some like sweet easy sources of carbohydrates and that as well for like post-workout and all that sort of stuff. But yep. yeah, it's just you to keep going, you need that as well. It's just knowing what to get. Like I said, like 100 grams of pixie sticks versus 100 grams of oats is going to have two completely different outcomes for it. Yep. I'm a, the, the whole sugar outcome, man, it's definitely not good for you. You know, it's simple fact of the matter. Sugar is not good for you in the amount that we consume. I agree with that. And I think another area is access to food. Yeah. So if we're looking at what it would cost to, uh, say, eat well, there's so much hype in the media now that, okay, if I want to eat well, you know, get fruit and veg in my diet, it costs a lot more than maybe takeaway food. But you recently did a Live Below the Line I did Live Below the Line. Um, It was my- that, yeah fifth year doing it mm. i failed the first year but like hardcore i thought i could do everything from scratch yeah. um 18 year old me did not have enough cooking skills <laughs> <laughs> that is what i've learned Tin food uh-huh. or, um or even that might be too expensive it's, yeah, yeah. A lot, you don't actually realize like how much it is until you kind of like break it down so the basis of it is is the extreme poverty line worldwide equates to approximately two australian dollars a day so you do it for five days. You get to do all your grocery shopping at the start of the week. I know a couple of people who've tried to do it with just the So you're running 10 bucks a week. $10 yeah. for five days. That's think, all think you rice. get. <laughs> I think air. Yeah. Just give me 10 bucks rice, worth of air. Potatoes. I want to see you on day two, man. I want to, I'll be gone. You get really You see bored. me just out the front and we're going, ah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like yeah. in past years, so like the past three years, so after the first kind of epic fail, I definitely went like, pastas and sauces and I'd try and get a loaf of like cheap Coles bread 
and X. And if I could get that, I was pretty sad kind of thing. Maybe yeah. get a pumpkin in there. You can do a lot with pumpkin. Um, but this year I decided I was going to do it completely from scratch, which was definitely a challenge. Um, I definitely had some food go off on me, which is less than ideal when you only have so much yeah. to do. But for my $10, I essentially had six eggs, a thing of plain flour. Yeah. Half a butternut pumpkin. It was like quite a small butternut pumpkin, even at that. But you know, half a butternut pumpkin. Yep. Um, a can of coconut cream. Two potatoes. Whoa, was, high roller. I know. Two potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> two. I made a potato bake with Dang, those two potatoes, really? and it tasted great. <laughs> um, French onion soup mix. Yep. Which uh, that came in with the potato bake. That's still fancy. French onion. Bonjour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but if you get it from Cole <laughs> and you get it, yep. the cheap brand one, it's only like 45 cents. Oh. Yeah, um, so I reckon there's some differences in the ingredients with canned that. tomatoes. Mm. And oh, I managed, I had to finish my entire shop. I'll oh, two apples and two bananas as well, because I always try to get fruit. Finished my shop and did the thing. Because I go through and I get like the core ingredients for what I've decided I'm going to have like my main meal. So like dinner. Because yep. lunch just really doesn't kind of exist that much. I've learned that it doesn't exist that much. Um, and I planned around that. So I kind of got all my stuff for dinner and then I went back and you know, picked out my fruit out because, you know, that'll be lunch kind of thing mm-hmm. um, and found I had exactly a dollar left. And I was like, okay, what if I can get some baby spinach? So I called mom because I knew she was at the grocery shop and I'd kind of been like thinking on the way home being like, okay, what do I want? And she managed to get me exactly 94 cents of baby spinach and it honestly saved my week. Like, How many leaves was that? <laughs> it was I, love it how you use, I love it how you use plurals. Yeah. <laughs> how many leaf? <laughs> how many leaf? Was that? Yeah. It was actually like a decent amount. Like it wasn't like the – Two dollar bags they kind of have in the supermarkets. It was yeah. about a bit more than half of that, so it was more okay. than I would have got if I just split a bag, kind of thing. You know what? I would so cheat on that thing. You know the self serve thing at Coles with all the nuts and that. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, I'd just be rolling around. We're we uncovering shop? a story here that we need. To- no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, just sticking off the top of my head, I'd be taking my two bucks and be still walking out with two bucks, but just be like, you'd be printing your own labels. Yeah, that's only 0.3 of a gram. But yeah, you I'm can't. just holding the bag up or something. There's an like A foot of air. Uh, so you got four kilos of almond dead. No, no. Read the label. Yeah. <laughs> that's salt tarners, man. Hey, that's what self serve um, saves you. Yeah, oh. the, the self serve, everything's yeah. carrots. Uh, so your steaks are not carrots. It is in my book. <laughs> but yeah, it's like Wednesday morning. I've like definitely had times where I've like woken up doing it before. Wednesday's always the hardest day without fail every time your stomach's still expecting yeah. food at this point. It hasn't just accepted its fate, which by Friday night, it definitely has. It's just like, okay, um, when you want to feed me again. Uh, let me know. <laughs> so, how many times a day were you eating? Like, um, was it just three two? times? Or three so, you still got the breakfast, lunch, and yep. dinner. Yeah. The only day I didn't do lunch was Monday because I only had four pieces of fruit. <laughs> That's not. Nice. I, I honestly, I could not do that. Anyone knows me? I, I said that I clean out a buffet, and I'm still sitting there. They turn the lights out on me. I can't live without. Yeah, food. I'm. Oh. Yeah, I'm straight up. Like, I go. Yeah, I go to town. Oh. Yeah, Wednesday was I woke up and I had a stomach ache and I had a headache and my hands were shaking and I was like, okay, we do breakfast. We do breakfast. We rearrange like the mental plan for the week kind of thing, like where food is belonging. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make breakfast somewhat, like not proper portions, but, you know, make sure I'm hitting everything important in breakfast because if I can't do, if I can't make it to lunch, we're quitting kind of thing. Yeah. Like if I still feel like this, I'm like, I can't do it. I have things to do today kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, so I had poached egg. I had some baby spinach and I had some of my pumpkin like smashed up kind of thing. Yeah. And I felt significantly better after that because, you know, I hit a protein, I hit a carb and I hit iron. Which so it's like nutritional Tetris. You really it, gotta like- <laughs> it really is. You have to think I've learned I have to have spinach. I have horrible iron levels that go up and down. They could be fine. They could not be. And uh. it's a five day space. I don't know. I've had spinach every single year. After that first year, which I had to drop out of because my iron levels like plummeted drastically on the Tuesday night. I tried to make it through Wednesday. I had uni. It wasn't pretty. Um, I didn't make it. It's gnarly. It's it's perspective as well. And like you can imagine the third world countries, like the things like the Kwashiorkor and Marasmus, where you see those babies that literally are being fed a small amount of rice. They've got that massive bloating in their stomach. They're completely nutritionally deficient. It's (sighs) even the fact like I had an oven. I could cook things like. 
like yeah. just like access. Like I could make a potato bake. Sure, my potato bake was a potato it, sliced it's a up. Stripped, yeah. That's what it is. This is a potato a- bake <laughs> in the oven. <laughs> well, no, it's a potato with um, coconut cream, and you put. Um, the French onion soup powder over the top. There's a name for those. What are you getting a bit like the potato and it was like a craze and you get the really bad 80s cafes still do them. I don't know. Hell. Yeah. No, there is a name. You Punishment. Only stuff them with either mint Jail. or cheap cheese and, yeah. Like jacket oh, potatoes? Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like a jacket potato, but, yeah, there's a name for them. I can't remember the craze. Maybe Craptastic. Maybe could, could look that up the... Yeah, they reduce their, yeah, they're terrible. I don't know, man, but remember last time we've said over these conversations where you come up with an idea? Yeah. Half the time it ain't true. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just it's, it's a lot about, like, making sure you are eating properly kind of thing and then also, um, like, lowering yourself back into it after kind of thing. Like, yeah. you always see there's a Facebook page that you can kind of join, like a Facebook group you can join if you're doing the challenge where we mm. can all kind of, you know, people will share recipe ideas and <laughs> because you only have so much to work with. Soup, and- air, water. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> a big one that comes – there's always someone every year who discovers that you can make pancakes from, like, bananas and oats and gets really hyped about it. Yep. I had pumpkin pancakes this year. They were an adventure. Made them. Felt yeah. very proud of them. Tasted yeah. great. <laughs> Went better than the normal pancakes I made. <laughs> which like a, yeah, bag of oats is, like, a dollar, I think. If yeah, you get, it's yeah. amazing how yeah. much – you really have to, like, weigh up. You have to pick what you need definitely for that week yeah. and accept, like, I know the eggs are going to cost a bit. But I like doing it with eggs. I like having the egg option. So I deal with it and <laughs> cut money away from other areas to go, yes, I can have six eggs. Mm. Um, but, yeah, just like you always see the Facebook posts of people who like, as you were talking about, like with doing any type of dieting, who like they finish and immediately go like eat a ton of food. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember the first year, one of the first years I did, I tried to drink a glass of orange juice the next morning. Like, it's the next morning. It was so acidic. I was like, I don't like this. And this Mm. is from someone, like, I really like orange juice. I drink probably more orange juice than it's entirely healthy. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, it was just so acidic and I couldn't do it. And so I know, like, this year I had a crumpet (laughs) and some honey on it and I went to gym. Mm. Because yep. I want because it was like a just a stretchy kind of class kind of thing, so not high impact or anything. Yeah, the sugar rush from the honey. You felt great. <laughs> I was like, it's like six a.m. on a Saturday morning, and everyone else is like, eh, and I'm like bouncing around gym, being like, hi everyone. I don't know why no one like hit me with a stick or something. Like I must have been so annoying. And then I got fruit on the way home because all I want all week after it is fruit. So I got to have mm. fruit and yogurt when I got home, and it was just the best thing. I was like, this is great. Yeah. Didn't have lunch just because like my body had more food in it than it had in any 24 hour period previous that week that adjustment period coming back it yeah. just couldn't do anything um went to the hockey game that night had some snacks at the hockey game went home had a proper dinner when yeah. i got home kind of thing even the next day went out for dinner after the hockey game and just like picked at chips <laughs> like it's just lowering your body back into it and re- being like you can you can have food again like yeah I'm sorry I took it away from you. It was for a good cause. We raised a ton of money. Like, please stop being mad and accept the food again. <laughs> you, and that's the thing. Like, your body will fight back. I mean, whatever like, fad diet you want to go down, um, you want to get a meal plan. And uh, right now, if you use a meal plan, it's a diet. Yeah. A meal plan is a diet in disguise. It's it's telling you here's a list of meals that you can have. You're not learning anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you back me up on this as well. Where yeah. You get people to say, oh, just write me a meal plan. It's like, No. Uh, the big, oh. the, the big thing I sort of look at with people who look at meal plans, I, I say, well, all right, if we're going to look at something, we're going to look at something that you can happily work towards your goals towards, but have something that you'll still feel good in six months with. Yep. So it's not going to be restrictive. It's not going to be like super intense with like very limited f- food. It's something like it's it's a lifestyle sort of meal plan to sort of work out like yeah, there's not going to be something where it's going to be like alright for four weeks you do this for four weeks you do that for four weeks it's like well alright we're looking for long term effects to keep you coming back and keep you progressing forward and keep you moving in there so it's like it's like looking at different options as well like I, I, I never ever write something that's super super specific right down to a food I never have like alright 100 grams of chicken breast in this meal every lunch or 100 because after a week they're like I can't do it I've been eating tuna every freaking day I'm dead you know I can't do it so it's more I give you guidelines of options at certain times so I say all right, well 
Preferably, like for me, as far as like the whole carbohydrate thing, I find I work better when I when I know that I'm busier. I'll center my carbohydrates. I'll work around there because yep. it's just how I roll. It just works for me. I like it. I go from there, and that's like with a lot of people I work with. It's more like right. I do want you to get carbs in all day, or I do want you to get protein. I do want you, but this is how I want it. I, I want it to look like this. So it's actually more portion control. Yep. So your plate should use like like you should use like a you know the simple one like your protein source like palm of your hand. Yep. Carbohydrates is like you know all that clench fists and like for your fat like two thumbs together and all that, and then you can put it together. You go well, cool, sweet, and it you, I get the idea of more like showing someone what a plate or what a meal should look like versus specifically being like 100 grams of chicken or 100 grams. Like, and I don't know your dietary recommendations too. I like think if you're lactose intolerant or ma- stuff like that. or It really makes me so happy to hear that because it. I sit in a really hard position. The fitness industry is combining training yeah. and nutrition. The barrier for giving nutrition advice mm. is a very, very grey area. Yeah. And to be quite honest, there is not a hard line – Limits and also no one to enforce those limits. Good. The, the 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 benefit probably from my standpoint, like yeah, I made some jokes like being like skeptical for a lot of these things. I would say I'm very lucky and very blessed to the the crew that I work with as far as like the personal trainers because we're all contractors through balance Mm -hmm. are very smart and knowledgeable people so the good thing about this is the the stuff we're talking about I hardly see so the guys and girls that I work with are like we've got some brilliant trainers like um a guy who I did work with has started a you know the direct meal sort of company he's got one called 6p brilliant they're real food Scott Hingston and all those guys yeah they do stuff with my gym too yeah (laughs) phenomenal he put his homework in it. Um, we have recently had um, uh, one of the trainers I work with, Debbie Keane, just recently won a, uh, I think it was a national title. That she's she's been competing for like 20, 30 years, been in the industry for twenty years. She, um, I'm not going to say um, her age because she'll probably beat me up, yeah. but she's amazing. She's brilliant. Like you don't even know that she's competing. She'll come back with a trophy. I'm like, you've been dieting. She's like, yeah. She's got it down to a science, you know, yeah. but you never see restricted. You never see a gaunt. She's always bubbly. She's always full of energy as well. Like she's just got it down to a sweet science and that as well. But she's, I've never heard her going, yeah, I'm going eight weeks, no carbohydrates and four hours of cardio. Like you'll see her train 50 people in a day, do three hours of cardio, do this, do that. And she looks immaculate. And then she goes, oh, yeah, yep, yeah. comes back a little bit more tanner and 80 trophies just carrying it into the gym <laughs> and that. Like she's got it down. Yeah. So with that, there's a lot of like – I think what I'm getting at here, there's a lot of good in the industry. You just got to know who to talk to. Like the proof's in the pudding. Like look at the guys and girls that are thick in the industry. Like, you know, with nutrition and health and sport, like the guys that are there, not, not someone who's got an Instagram account, the guys who have the history and the knowledge and the people and the resources, like they're the ones you look at, you know, not some, something you've seen on social media like yep. go deep and ask them the big questions and they'll definitely be able to answer it agreed yeah. I honestly it, that is a very good in terms of a, a core message um, but I'm going to get my JFK hat on here a little bit mm. and <laughs> throw a bit of controversy in there this is a, a very fine line that I walk because I do a lot of work with fitness facilities yeah um, owners and personal trainers who look up to people who have been in the industry a long time, but they don't have the dietetic qualification. And yes, they can write a meal plan to achieve a certain body composition goal. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. But there are so many other factors in terms of health, in terms of general well-being, in terms of adequacy or deficiency, Mm -hmm. in terms of psychology about how that person best works, to put all those components together and to make a meal plan. And- from what we're seeing, and this is even from the Dietitians Association of Australia, how Fitness Australia are treating them in terms of setting down some firm guidelines about where the line is. Yeah. They're not getting back to us so we can work with you yeah. together. And don't get me wrong, I started as a PT as well. Yeah. Same thing, you know, but to draw this line and to not have it clear cut in the sand, it is devaluing. Oh, what 100%, we do man. As I agree with you 100% on the way here. So, for that, I think the best way to do it is to stay in your lane and have a team. So the way I work, I handle the gym side of things. Great. Yep. Anybody wants thick nutrition? I got your card, your information. I'll be like, great. 
here's a guy you want to see. It's the same with mental health. All yeah. right. Contact with Nate if you did. Bam. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like you <laughs> yeah. have a team. Like if I'm working with someone who's a, who's a rehab situation and it's an injury, I'll be like, listen, I've got a basic background for it, but if it's this, this, and this, this is the physio I work with. Go see him. He'll recommend it. Come back to me. Yeah. And then go from there. Same with nutrition. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do. A lot of people go, well, what do you do? Well, I do what works for me. That's fine. It, it works for me. I'm, I, it, it's worked for me for that long. I go from there. But flipping flip side of that, yeah, man, I see that stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. and it, Which is why I wanted to bring it up because you're seeing this every day. You're in that fitness industry every day mm. and and it's not a bugbear, but, again, it's just that devaluing factor. And because we're not working together, I think, to promote – the same message and as you said working in each other's backyard well, properly I think there's so many mixed messages out there that's causing yeah. the confusion well we get it we get a spin off of that as well where we get people who are unqualified but have good marketing skills that take business away from the people who are educated and are switched on and do all that yep. they lose out because they get someone who can actually market something through social media and then people will jump on that. Like you actually see it nowadays. Yeah. Like, um, there was a big fitness program that come through Australia and that recently and they were giving all this advice and then people have gone, well, who's your nutritionist? Oh, no, we don't use one. Ah, wrong, you're out. You, you can't do that. Yeah. But people like I've worked at places that are like that. You know, oh, where'd you get this nutrition plan from? Oh, the guy who I train with gives it to me. This is hopeless. Remember, you're lactose intolerant. He's giving you milk every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, you know, he, he told you to have yoga. Oh, the guy's jacked and he's 6% body fat. I don't care. Yeah. You know? Or this person does this. Or you hear like, oh, I heard this diet that this someone doesn't have carbohydrates for a thousand years. Well, no. It doesn't work. You know? Yeah. And exactly. like we, it gets taken away from us. Like you you hear it like I've had so many people that do the, the some of the real – dodgy challenges and that like they'll train with me but get the nutrition from them and then I'll show them their results in the gym of why they've tapered off yeah exactly I'm not losing any weight because your calorie deficiency is that low your body is in fight or flight you're basically clinging on to everything yeah like, you know, your body was like a, a crappy rug sale. It was just getting rid of whatever it could <laughs> for a real cheap rate and then it stopped, you know. And, like, yeah, you do see it and there's so many people that do that. But on the flip side, there's a lot of people that don't who are in this for the right reason and do put the hours in the in the gym and in the homework and the, the courses and the education and the trial and error and the forefront of the science. And that's probably the big thing I saw about Filex, you've got Filex, which is a conference, and you've got the Fitness Expo. Filex is the who's who of the industry that are backed by science, knowledge, experience, all that sort of stuff. The Fitness Expo is like, great, you got a few likes, we'll give you a store. You know, there's so many different sort of, you know. Issues in the industry, basically. Yeah, you're going to yeah. get that. Like, yeah. And I know everybody says they're in it for the right reason and that as well, and I do understand that, but remember, you're playing with people's lives. How do we promote change? How do we move forward? Because there's nothing clear at the moment. Mm. Um, if you're on the ground in face-to-face, yeah. I, I'm telling you now, you know the same thing. You don't have time. No. Someone needs to make time, but the, the question is how to do it because no one's found the right way to do it, mm. um, but it needs to work together. That's a million-dollar question, my friend. Yeah. You know, and I think people are slowly starting to come around to that as well. Yeah. Um, I think because we see the change in everybody's lifestyle about how it is so quick and everything's happening, but – in looking at that from the statistics of where we're coming, like they're actually saying in theory, instead of us progressing as as a human race, we're actually declining. This may be the first generation that's life expectancy goes backwards. Absolutely. So you're like, all right, well, what do we need to do with that? And then on top of that, they're actually um, a few studies have shown that there's actually more people overweight than underweight. So you're like, well, right, what do we what do we need to look at from here? Like we need to look at people that uh you know, who who have the education behind them and, mm. and that. But there's also people getting on board, like, you know, where the prevention's better than the cure. Like, Oh, so much so. If backing, you, like, the industry, yeah. like the fitness industry, the health industry, the wellness industry gets put to a background of, like, a pseudoscience compared to, like, a pharmaceutical industry. Oh, well, there's more money in that. Yeah, it's easy. There, you know? there is more yeah. money in that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like what we chat about. It's easy to give you 20 pills as opposed to say, like, the going back a step, 
studies have shown the difference, the the benefits of exercise and good nutrition on Alzheimer's, Parkinson, depression, do all that. Yep, but they don't tell you that. They go, well, right, we'll give you these 10 tablets. Five of them are going to put weight on you. Five are going to make you suicidal. The other one's going to give you depression. But once they get wear off, we'll give you this to counteract those. Poly, was it polypharmacy, they call it? Yeah. So you're taking one thing that's not natural in a tablet and then you've yeah. got to take 10 different things to counteract the side effects of that unnatural substance yeah. in your body and then you keep going over yeah. and over oh, it's, and over. It's a, but it's, it's a funny situation we live in. Like we have the access to knowledge more than ever. But that's the confusing thing. There's too much. That's what I mean. I think, what's like, the yeah. right knowledge? Where's the right place to look? It's confusing. Even saying that, things that we thought were right 10 years ago are different now. Like, you know, and it's that whole- Absolutely. Coming forward and going from there. and Yeah. And it's making the best choice that you can now with the yeah. evidence. That Just take you your time. Now. Do your homework. Like, yeah. there's not- I, I don't feel like the beautiful thing is there's not- When dealing with-, with us, people, progression, improvement, there's not one right way. And that's just purely because of who we are. There's not one right way. It's like with training, it's like with nutrition. What works for someone doesn't work with someone else. Biggest thing is try a few things. And if they don't work, take a good point of it and then move on. But just be smart with the choices. If it's something that is restrictive, like you're removing a complete macronutrient or whatever or if it's something that's way too stretched or way too for just be smart with the choices yep. and have a look at like the examples I find examples that people have done it and there's a lot of small I'm, I'm really lucky to work with a lot of smart people that know their stuff and like from talking to you to all this like there's so many smart people out there like just take your time the, the, the only downside is the people who are smart are spending more time trying to get better at what they do as opposed to telling everybody what they do. <laughs> yes. And that's the downside because <laughs> yeah. they're the ones trying to put out the fires from the people who are doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. They make the loudest noise. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Absolutely. You know, so. Well, I think we've run out of time and uh, there's a few, uh, I'll say sweet messages in there. That's a bad way to put it. But um, Yeah. Yeah. It was all right. <laughs> we didn't even get to talk about flat earth or nothing. No, we didn't. Nah. I, I had some whole training things in there as well so really? we can come back to that can I you give us like a fun. bit of a spoiler of what you have a just in case spoiler yeah. yes Look, how about you only need to train once or twice a week oh we talked about this we did talk about this and I think we need to delve into it a little bit more uh, about what that's going to do for you what can, what it can do for you we don't have an explicit rating either yet do we I'm not but, sure, Mick. Oh. Is, there, is there a rating on this at the moment? No, nah, we better be good with this one because no. there's several <laughs> bombs you could drop on that and I won't it's, it, we'll put it in the Trump category. It's fake news. You've you know? been in this industry how long now? 15 years. Okay. Last thing I want to say mm-hmm. is when you're looking at where you're getting information from, yeah. 15 years experience combined with PT qualifications. Mm-hmm. 15 years ago, it was vastly different to get those qualifications, mm-hmm. what you need to do compared to what you need to do now. Yeah. Plus, on-the-job experience, and I'll tell you now, on-the-job is worth a yeah. hundred times, a million times what you would ever learn in a textbook. Yeah. yeah. So, use both of those instead of looking firstly at the piece of paper, yeah. real-life experience, because honestly, you, most people can flash a piece of paper at you these days, okay? Yeah. Really, it's meaningless until you find out what's I think the quickest that. way to sum it up with anything that's worthwhile, it takes time. It's an investment. Yeah, it's you and you only get one body. That's it. And the easiest way to put it one or two times a week is like, and the extensive period of time, let's just say like you've got a 168 hour week and you do two hours. Percentage. Uh, yeah. If I had a calculator, it's I'd probably do less than 5%. Part. It's nothing. You know, you and only, get, you will, you only achieve so much yeah. in that time frame. And I definitely, yeah, that, that's definitely going to be another episode because we get for hours on that one. <laughs> okay. If that, well, that'll be number one on the next yeah, one. Yeah, man. Be sweet. But, yeah. um, yeah, I think the best way to put it, it, it's. I think it's the adage I put. If you want something worth keeping, it's going to take work and time. Yep. Yep. Just got to put it in. Hard yards, good days, bad days. Dig in. Go from there. Yeah, it's yep. a good one to finish on. Yeah. Either with training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just got to, it's consistency. Like if you get good at anything, what is it? Ten thousand hours. Yeah. Sweet. Every day. That's nothing. Do something. Yeah. Exactly. Exercise. Get better. Basics. No, stop being average. Yeah. Blah, the 15 minutes. <laughs> Don't give me that. There's a sore point right there. Oh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to put a sentence together for that one. Oh, that's all right. Well, you're keen for round two, so oh. we'll work on that, guys. Coming up, uh, there'll be the training part of these myth busting as well, so that could get a little bit fiery there, that one. I think with <laughs> a lot of uh, 
years at the table here for that one. So. Yeah. Guys, help us out. Jump on, like the page, red button below. Help us get up there in the ratings. Um, so if you want to follow us, um, first and foremost, get out your Glee coffee. Have a good sip because we've all enjoyed it today. Yeah. Again. Good supporters. Quality stuff. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It's always good stuff. It powers you along without getting too aggressive. It's- yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on my day by it. I am by Glee. Check out Glee Coffee too, guys. But if you're following us on Twitter, so you're looking at Twitter at grassroots underscore AU, Instagram at grassroots, grassroots sports. Uh, so I should try that again, should I say. Instagram at grassroots underscore sports and facebook.com forward slash grassroots sports. And search for grassroots on iTunes and also YouTube after I completely butchered that, guys. So <laughs> No, you did good. Yeah? Yeah, give us a like, give us a subscribe, I put like some that. comments in, yeah. share it around. Help Check Jace. out the writing section of the website. Website, that's oh, we got a new. Is it a new website? It, updated it's website. All up. There hey. is writing things on there. Yeah, that, that is almost getting Mick out here, I reckon, and having a, a headshot right here for the amount of hours and time that has gone into that. Yeah. I think there needs to be some appreciation by the Earth Movers because that man has not slept nah. at all. It has been purely caffeinated again on <laughs> yeah. Glee Coffee. Yeah, and um, you know we'll all give him a hug after the show. For that. Damn straight, hugs yeah. all around. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats a hug. No worries, guys. Okay, look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And I said, like, share the word, and look forward to seeing you next time. And that's it from the Fox Den.